Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the AMD AM4 platform is ideal for all sorts of budgets and it seems like new CPUs are popping up all the time. Whether you want a low cost quad core for a cheap gaming setup or an 8 core CPU with integrated graphics that will render older low end graphics cards obsolete, there is something for everyone. That said, some chips make more sense than others and today I want to talk about the new Ryzen 7 5700. Now I think this has been around for a while while as part of pre-built but it started appearing as a standalone product at various online retailers. I recently read a review of the 5700 over on TechSpot which tells you all you need to know really but I wanted to share my own thoughts mainly for the sake of adding some context based on UK pricing. So you know how the Ryzen 5 5600 is basically a lower clocked 5600X? Well the 5700 is not a lower clocked 5700X, which itself is a fantastic processor by the way. Instead, the Ryzen 7 5700 is essentially a 5700G APU with the integrated graphics disabled. Now performance wise, this doesn't make it bad. I mean, when it comes to gaming, if you were to pair the 5700 non-X or non-G, whatever you wanna call it, with an RTX 4060, just as an example, then it will do okay at 1080p. The CPU is clearly the limiting factor most, if not all of the time, as part of a setup like this, but hitting at least 60 FPS shouldn't be a problem, even at higher settings. In fact, it's going to perform pretty much exactly the same as the 5700G would in pairing with a discrete GPU. The thing is, because this is basically a 5700G without the iGPU and not a slightly slower 5700X, it loses half its L3 cache, so it has 16 megabytes instead of 32, and it also lacks PCIe 4 support. Of course, these facts don't render the 5700 useless, but the naming is a little bit confusing in my opinion, given the specifications. Furthermore, the price doesn't do it any favours. At the time of this video, I found two retailers who had it in stock, listed at £169.99. The superior 5700X is listed at the same retailers for just £10 more, and in fact, Again, at the time of this video, Amazon has the 5700X for £167, a few pounds less. Furthermore, we should mention the 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 5600. This goes for around £120 to £130 right now, has PCIe 4 support and 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and when it comes to gaming, it will actually be very similar, maybe even a little better, than the 5700, a difference which is further highlighted when we pair it with a more powerful graphics card, in this case the 4070 Super. This is despite the fact that the 5600 has less cores and threads. Now there may be some exceptions to this, I know Starfield preferred the higher core count as opposed to the extra L3 cache, but most of the time, for gaming, you can spend less on the 5600 and get an equally as solid experience. Of course, the 5700, despite its flaws, will score better in the Cinebench result, and the extra cores and threads will probably help it out in video rendering, but it still doesn't feel quite right at the price I'm seeing it at. What I will say though is that if this were to eventually match the 5600's price, which in some cases is £119.99, then yeah, it would make more sense, given that it's not a bad product in my opinion. It needs a new name as well. Actually, leave a comment letting me know what you think it should be called. 5700S, 5700T, something like that. This is a pretty short video, but I think I've said all I need to say, really. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.